Hi folks. I have received some questions regarding my playing mix and match with Singer 306 shuttle assembly components. Hook assembly rather. I figured it was about time to do a deeper dive on what's possible, what's practical, and why on earth anybody would want to. Okay, starting point. When Singer introduced these machines to the market, they put them out using a special 206 by 13 needle build as the proper needle to use with these machines. I've seen all sorts of speculation as to why they did this. At this late date, there is nothing resembling an official authoritative source. This is a standard 15 by 1 needle. It happens to be a size 18 from Oregon. This is the Schmetz 206 by 13 and it's a size 14 needle. The important thing is that the distance from the end of the shank to the top of the needle eye is identical on both of them. Now most sewing machine needles that is the critical dimension for specification purposes. Different brands, different sizes, different styles will have different lengths from the eye to the point but on the 206 by 13 there is this short run and in this application it is critical. You can substitute the 15 by 1 needle for the 206 and the machine's timing does not need to be adjusted, the feed does not be adjusted, everything is proper because all of that is controlled by the length above the needle eye. The problem with the length below the needle eye comes from bobbin cases. This is a bobbin case that fits a 306W. It's got the open top, it's got approximately that much space, it has the tension spring running up the side to the edge of the cut. This is a bobbin case from a 9610 industrial. The cut is a little narrower because it is a straight stitch machine, not a zigzag. And the spring only runs up to the top of the latch handle cut. Okay. This is a bobbin case from a 306K that has, again, the wide top cut, but it's got the closed in area here, the long spring, and it has a notch down here for the locating pin that keeps it from spinning inside the bobbin case. Uh, the 9610 uses the sides of the top here for that purpose. The hook body from the 306 class machines is a Simanco number 276251. The different styles of bobbin or hook assembly for the 306 use the same hook. There doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason about which 
one was which machine. Uh, that may be due to them playing kind of loose with whatever parts they had available when they assembled them. It may have been later attempts to standardize and it may have been repair people somewhere along the line just tossing in whatever they had available. The shuttle inside the hook assembly is either the type that has two locating pins up near the top or a single locating pin at when it's installed would be about the five o'clock position. If your locating pin is at five o'clock you need to use a bobbin case with a notch. The Singer part number is 173058. If you have the ones that are open at the top, and have the upper latch. The Singer part number is 105032. And the 9610, I don't believe I have a Singer here. One of the things you learn as an engineer, I'm not one, but I've known many, is if you want to eat on a regular basis, you don't reinvent the wheel six times before lunch. For whatever reason, they decided that this machine was going to use a special needle but they had already been making rotary hook machines for quite some time. Uh, I've got two 9610s. One of them was made in 1910. Uh, all of the 306s I have were made in the mid 50s. The shuttles are reasonably compatible. When I needed to make a shuttle for a 306, they used cooling they already had for making 9610 shuttles and hook assemblies as much as possible. So the shuttle race cut into the hook was a certain diameter and a certain width and it would accept different hook assemblies without too much of a squawk. We got identical hooks using different shuttles, different bobbins. If you want to use standard needles, you need to have additional room. On the 206 bobbin cases, there's plenty of room in the center and the left when the needle is at far right deflection. If the tip is too long, it can strike this part of the bobbin case. That's not good for needles, and it's not good for the bobbin case either. And 
there are different ways to fix that problem. You can buy this style of case with the five o'clock cut that has been hogged out to give additional room for a standard needle. Uh, they run roughly 20 bucks a piece but they're just a drop-in fit. You don't have to do anything more playing mix and match. It looks and functions just like the original bobbin case which actually I don't think functions all that well. You have the open top which I have and you can see the spring runs up to the upper edge. If you're running in straight stitch mode you can use a ordinary 9610 bobbin case which I had laying around here recently yes. this is it and it will have plenty of needle clearance in the center still clear on the left but it will be much more likely to strike on the right because you can see plainly that the cutouts aren't even close to being the same. Now you can take the 9610 case and a Dremel and you can hog out this opening to the point where you're not worried about a needle strike. There is a problem with that. As you can see from the springs here, the thread exits the tension spring here and it has to pass behind the position finger up here so it's unsupported over that distance. This is up here. It works quite a bit better. When you first try to bring the bobbin thread up with a 9610 bobbin case, it will often loop back around and get caught behind this lever or in between the case and the hook assembly and that's a little bit of a drag. Once it's threaded and the thread is up and operating, uh, it's not a problem, but sooner or later you're going to have to change bobbins. Which brings us to the bobbins. This is a genuine Singer 306 original equipment bobbin. That is clean and pretty as it could be, but that is what shipped with the machine. And in the OEM bobbin cases, it works reasonably well. You can see it's basically flush there. It does not have a lot of slop when fastened in place. The thread feeds out, all's fine with the world. If you use this bobbin with the 9610 bobbin case, again, everything's fine. This bobbin will also fit on the stock bobbin winder and the positioning arm will drop down and she will wind and load normally. This is an aftermarket 306 bobbin. It will fit on the bobbin winder and the positioning arm will not enter or if it does it puts such a drag on here that it will not function. It will not load even though it's fairly close to the OEM bobbin it is not identical. This is an aftermarket bobbin 
that I got from Central Michigan Sewing Supplies that is also not precisely identical to the OEM bobbin but it is close enough that it will generally function properly with these machines. This is the only modern manufacturer bobbin that I am aware of that will function properly. That kind of puts crimp in things. These are not exactly expensive, but I hate to have what I consider a consumable part available only from a single source. These are pretty much everywhere. They're made in China. Uh, quality ranges from quite good down to dismal. And it's closer in size to a standard L-Class bobbin. These are advertised as fitting all sorts of L-Class machines. This is a 9610 L-Class bobbin and it has no notch for winding. It has to fit onto a friction type or spring loaded bobbin winder. Uh, the 9610 normally has a separate bobbin winder mounted on the table. Yeah, there one is in the background. Industrial machines that use L-class bobbins Often, they don't even bother winding them. They buy them pre-loaded, pre-wound, so that a operator can just swap in new ones as necessary. Uh, some of the pre-wound don't even have sides. If they do, they're paper or cardboard. We don't really need to cover that. Uh, other than that, if you use the proper bobbin case, you can use any L-Class bobbin. So, go back down here with all the toys. You can use the 9610 case in the open top book assembly. It will not fit the other because of the difference in the locating peg. And then we have the 20U bobbin case. This one has an anti-backlash spring in it and it has a low position on the thread tensioner but it has this little pigtail up here. So When you put the wound bobbin in, you pull it up past the tension spring and down and it like that. And what this does is it keeps the loose end of the thread up where on the first cycle it gets snatched and dragged up through the needle plate rather than dropping down and jamming things and you can see that enough of the case has been cut away that there is absolutely no danger of a needle strike because these bobbin cases are used in a 20U which is a zigzag capable machine. Now when I use the standard L-Class bobbins in a 306 bobbin case there is another issue. These are heavy. When the machine is running there's some inertia. 
they tend to freewheel just a bit. And because of the extra clearance, a loop forming on the bobbin while especially while it's close to full can run off to the side when you start sewing again and either wrap around the tube in the middle of the case or run off the other side and wrap around the pin in the middle of the shuttle and either one is going to mess things up for you That's why the 20U case has the anti-backlash spring. It puts just enough drag on the slightly narrower bobbins that they don't spin out and form a loose loop that then may or may not get taken up properly. This is the setup that I'm using on the machine I'm taking with me. Okay. Yeah, if I haven't confused you yet, here's where it gets fun. You can put a 20U case or a 9610 case into an open top 306 shuttle. There is some extra room here that was cut away for the 306 spring. But that's not a problem, it's just extra space. If you try to use a 306 case in a 9610 shuttle, it won't fit. There is no cutout for that spring. If you try to use a 5 o'clock cut case in anything other than a shuttle with the 5 o'clock locating pin, it's not going to fit. Like I said, my choice was to go with the 20U bobbin case. It will fit in the standard 306 hook assembly as long as it is the hook that has the two locating pins up at the top. That would be this one right here. If you have one of the five o'clock setups you don't need to change the entire hook assembly you can change out just the shuttle this will fit either because either of these uses the same hook number now, why would you want to do all of this? It seems to be a confusing headache. Uh, the number one reason is so that you have more choice of needles you can use with the machine. These are available in a size 14 and a size 16, and as far as I'm aware, that's it. 
There were some out there in size 12 for a while. If you run into them, new old stock, you know, good for you. Uh, if you plan to stitch a wide variety of material, you're going to need a wide variety of needles to get the best use out of the machine, and the 206s just aren't it. I'm sure you've seen the classic photo on the internet of this style of bobbin case with needle strikes all over here and down through the center and both sides and generally looking beat to snot. Okay, if it is properly seated in the shuttle assembly and latched in place, the hook comes around, the needle passes through the slot right here. Okay? If the needle is not lined up properly, it will not hit the bobbin case because it will not pass through this slot. It will hit the shuttle assembly. If it passes through this slot and hits the bobbin case down in this center area, it is because for one reason or another the point of the needle is way too low. Even with a standard 15 by 1 needle, there's a couple of millimeters of clearance under it at full extension. To hit the bottom of the case, you either have to be using an excessively long needle, and there are some out there with a very long taper point that might possibly reach that far, or you have to be using a needle that is not fully seated in the needle bar allowing it to stick down further and thus break the bobbin case. Just something to keep in mind. Everything I've seen showing needle strikes on these cases were either down in the center or in an area that could only be hit by the needle coming through here if the case was not properly latched in place. I like the machine itself. If it's set up to use standard needles, it is a good, solid sewing machine.